Hydrogen ions are important as an inorganic ion in many organisms, and the formula for hydrogen ions are simply H+. So because they're positively charged, they are cations. The most influential role that hydrogen ions have is in photosynthesis and in respiration, which are kind of the reverse reactions of each other, in driving the production of ATP. And ATP is essentially the energy currency of most cells, and this relies on the presence of hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are also what determines the pH of any fluid, including bodily fluids. For example, blood pH, which must be maintained, otherwise it can affect the function of haemoglobin. So the haemoglobin molecules exist in the blood, and specifically in the blood cells, and the pH of the blood is determined by the level of hydrogen ions in the blood. And this is what the pH measure of anything is, it's how many hydrogen ions there are. And if the pH of the blood changes too much, then the structure of haemoglobin can alter, and if we alter this too much, then it becomes unable to carry oxygen, and this could be fatal. Not only do the bodily fluids have the pH maintenance, but cytoplasmic pH must be maintained too, and if this changes, we can affect the function of enzymes. So proteins include enzymes, and they have a specific 3D shape for their function. And if the pH of the cytoplasm again varies too much, because there are too many or too few hydrogen ions, this can cause the protein to lose its shape and denature. And if it denatures, then the function of the enzyme is removed. So the level of hydrogen ions must be very carefully kept the same. Ammonium is perhaps one of the less known inorganic ions, but it's still very important in several creatures. Ammonium has the formula of NH4 plus. So it's a nitrogen with four hydrogens, and overall it has a positive charge, making it a cation. So the important reason that we use ammonium is that it's a source of nitrogen atoms. And nitrogen is a component of many biological molecules, including amino acids, which we use to make up proteins. So remember, looking at an amino acid here, they all follow the same basic structure. And importantly, they have to have this nitrogen present, and this comes from ammonium. Nitrogen is also needed to make organic bases, which are the components of nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. So in the molecules of DNA and RNA, which contain genetic information, we have organic bases which contain atoms of nitrogen. And we have a lot of DNA in all of our cells, so we need lots of nitrogen, and therefore we take this from the ammonium ions. Our body also makes vitamins, and other organisms make different vitamins to us, but again, they can contain nitrogen too, for example, vitamin B. And there are different types of vitamins, and therefore we need all of these nitrogen atoms in order to form these so they can carry out their various functions. And in plants, nitrogen is found in chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is an important molecule found in leaves. And as a molecule, it contains various atoms. You can see a magnesium atom in there and various nitrogen atoms too. And it's very important in light absorption so that photosynthesis can occur. So plants definitely need a source of nitrogen to carry out their main functions. The ammonium ion itself is formed from ammonia, which is slightly different. And ammonia accepts a hydrogen ion in order to form this. So this helps to maintain pH levels as well. So if we look at a diagram here, the formula of ammonia is NH3, just ammonia. Whereas the formula of ammonium is NH4 plus, and in forming ammonium, the ammonia can take a hydrogen ion and add it to the nitrogen to get that fourth hydrogen. And because the hydrogen ion has a positive charge, ammonium has a positive charge too. And in doing this, what we can do is use ammonia to kind of mop up any excess hydrogen ions. So if the pH of the blood is dropping, i.e. the hydrogen ions are going up, we can use ammonia to act as a kind of mop or buffer to take up hydrogen ions and keep the pH at a suitable level. And in doing so, we form this NH4. And ammonium ions are very important as part of the nitrogen cycle, which plants rely on for a source of nitrogen. Nitrate ions are another important inorganic ion, and the formula is given by NO3 minus. So it's nitrogen with three oxygens and one minus charge. This can confuse people because it's not 3 minus, it's NO3, and then the whole thing has a minus charge. And because it's a minus charge, this is a type of anion. So like ammonium, 
which is given as the formula NH4+. Nitrate ions are good as a source of nitrogen for various organisms. And nitrogen is used for making particular molecules like amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. So looking at an amino acid again, we can see nitrogen is present. And so we can use nitrate to derive this nitrogen. We also use nitrogen in making organic bases, which are components of nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. So DNA and RNA contain genetic information, and there's a lot of organic bases crammed into every cell. And so we need this nitrogen, either from ammonium, or in this case, from nitrate. We also need nitrogen in our vitamins. So vitamins that either plants or animals make. It's normally a component of the vitamin molecule, and so the nitrate has that nitrogen to donate into making the vitamin. And nitrogen is also found in chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is the green pigment found in plants used in photosynthesis. And you can see the nitrogen atoms here surrounding a magnesium ion. And just like ammonium, nitrate ions are an important part of the nitrogen cycle, which helps to circulate nitrogen between the air and the plant. Hydrogen carbonate ions are another important ion, and they have a more complicated formula, which is HCO3 minus. So it's hydrogen, carbon, three oxygens, and overall it has a one minus charge. Because it's a negative charge, this ion is an anion. So the formation of hydrogen carbonate ions is when carbon dioxide dissolves in the blood. So remember, carbon dioxide is made from respiring tissues, otherwise known as CO2. And in the blood, it combines with water, which is H2O, to form hydrogen carbonate ions, which has the formula HCO3 minus. And it also forms hydrogen ions, which are simply H plus. So in the blood, this reaction happens, and it can happen either direction, whereby it's made from carbon dioxide dissolving in the blood. So because of this, the hydrogen carbonate ions are an important way of transporting carbon dioxide in the blood. So if we were to look at any tissue in the body, as the tissue carries out respiration, it releases CO2. The CO2 is toxic and we need to get rid of it, and therefore the CO2 dissolves into the blood, and it mixes with water to form the hydrogen carbonate ions. And the hydrogen carbonate ions transport themselves through the blood, and eventually they reach the lungs where it can be breathed out as CO2 again. It's easier to transport CO2 in this way as opposed to its natural form. And because CO2 can make hydrogen ions, these hydrogen carbonate ions are important in regulating blood pH, which should be maintained at around 7. Phosphate ions are also an important inorganic ion, and they have the chemical formula of PO4, 3 minus. So that's a phosphate and four oxygens and a 3 minus charge, so it's a very negative ion. Because it's negative, it's an anion. And they're important in several biological molecules as a component. For example, in nucleotides, phosphate is needed, and these make up nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. So for DNA and RNA, which contain genetic information, each of those bases has a nucleotide. And one nucleotide has to have a phosphate group, which is this green circle here. And being added to the base, they help form this nucleotide. They also help form a very important molecule found in all organisms called ATP. So you can see that ATP has a similar structure to a nucleotide, but it can have up to three phosphate groups. And these phosphate groups are important in releasing energy for the cell. Phosphates are also found in making phospholipids. So phospholipids contain a phosphate group here, and the rest of the molecule is part of a lipid. And these are important in cell membranes. Phosphate is also used not just for structuring biological molecules, but it's also important in the breakdown of glucose in respiration. And one of the first steps in breaking down glucose is to phosphorylate the glucose by adding a phosphate group, which helps it to start the breakdown. So this is an important step in respiration. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.